Hey yo, what's going on everybody? This is David and today I'm going to teach you how to get the best wireless streaming for your Quest from your PC. So this video is going to be the ultimate guide for smooth and clear gameplay. All right. Now I have had the worst time with Quest's wireless streaming for some reason i don't know why but it has never worked out for me that's why i've always played wired but ever since moving into my new house i really wanted to get to the root of why it wasn't working for me so i really sat down and i spent hours upon hours testing every single setting i could until it freaking worked for me and i pretty much got it i finally have broken the code and wireless streaming is for me almost as good as wired now it's still not perfect i still get a better picture with wired obviously i can play at a much higher bit rate like 900 megabytes per second plus and the latency is still better with wired and occasionally i will get the micro stutter here and there with wireless where i won't with wired but i pretty much have it perfect and if I had my router at a better location than I do right now, I could actually get almost pretty much one-to-one -one with wired, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later. All right, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is to buy a dedicated router. You're not gonna wanna use the router that is connected to all your other devices in your room, especially if you're connecting to a band that is used by other devices. Now you can, connect all your devices to a different band. Like for example, if you connect your TV and your phone and all that to a 2.4 gigahertz band and then just use the five gigahertz band for your Quest, that can work. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a lot of load on that router and that router's processor is gonna get bogged down. So it's not gonna give you all the power that you want. So you're gonna to want to buy a dedicated router just for you. And the only thing that's gonna be connected to the router is your Quest device. You're not gonna to want to use any other devices that are connected to that router. Once you buy that router, you're gonna to want to make it into an access point as well. What this is gonna do is it's going to bridge the connection from your main router to your access point and then back down to your computer so that you can pass that ethernet signal from your secondary router to your PC. Now you can technically use your dedicated access point or router with your PC without any internet. But for most people, you're gonna to wanna to use some type of internet, especially if you have an ethernet connection. And the way to do that is to bridge your connection from your main router to your access point down to your computer. Also, make sure to buy a quality Wi-Fi 6 at the minimum router. You're gonna to want to buy something that has enough bandwidth that's going to be able to take in a lot of data. Now, at the minimum, you are gonna to want to have something that supports at least 1200 megabytes per second, but what I recommend is to buy a router that supports up to 2400 megabytes per second bandwidth. And what this is gonna allow you to do is just up the bit rate on the codec that you're gonna use on your streaming service and it's basically just going to give you a better quality signal now if you want to upgrade from there you should look into getting a wi-fi 6e router and what that's going to allow you to do is to have a dedicated 6 gigahertz band and that is good for if you have a lot of interference where you live so if you live in a small apartment or uh, you have neighbors that are close to you and there's a lot of interference that is going on. There's a lot of people using five gigahertz bands. There's a lot of people using 2.4 gigahertz bands. There's just a lot of people using Wi-Fi signals all around you, right? This is going to cause issues with the signal that you're using. It's going to cause you micro stutters. It's going to cause lag, stuff like that, that you want to avoid. So getting a router that is capable of six gigahertz is gonna allow you to pretty much uh, reduce any type of interference because most people are using Wi-Fi six with five gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. So you're gonna want to be on a band that most people are not using. And even better than that, even if there are people that are using six gigahertz routers, they're gonna be too far away to cause any interference. Since six gigahertz has a very short range, even if 
your neighbors are using six gigahertz, that signal is probably not strong enough to reach where you're at. All right, tip number two is actually the most important tip and the one that helped me personally the most is to make sure to place the router without any obstructions around it, such as metal objects, and also to have it be line of sight to the headset. This single change made the biggest difference for me. Whenever I place my router on top of my receiver or close to my computer or close to my table, which has some metal legs, I noticed a lot more micro stuttering and just lag in general than when I placed it unobtrusively on the floor, standing on top of a cardboard box, pretty much the indirect line of sight to my headset. That's when I noticed the best signal. That's when I noticed the smoothest gameplay is when I had it in that line of sight. All right, so for tip number three is where you're gonna want to go into your Wi-Fi settings and change a few things. So I have personally Linksys. So this is the webpage that I go to and this is what mine looks like, but you might have another brand and it might look a lot different. And there are different steps to getting into your Wi-Fi settings for every brand out there. All right, so you're gonna have to figure that out on your own. I can't help you there because I only have Linksys. So if you do have a Linksys router, then this is gonna be helpful for you. But basically, just type in the router or access point IP address into this little search bar, click enter, and then you're gonna go to the login page. After that, you're gonna log in and you're gonna to go to a setting like this. And what you're gonna to wanna to find is this type of Wi-Fi settings page, all right? Now on my Linksys, I had to actually go down here on the bottom right and click a button called CA. And then after that, it allowed me to go into a more advanced Wi-Fi settings page. So this is what mine looks like. Now I have 2.4 gigahertz. I have five gigahertz and I have six gigahertz that I can use. Since I'm not gonna be using 2.4 or five, I'm only gonna be using six, I'm gonna turn those off, all right? There's no reason for me to have them on. The only thing that I am gonna to connect to my router or access point is my Quest and I'm gonna have it at the six gigahertz band. So that's the only one that I'm gonna have turned on, all right? So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your channel width and that's going to give you 80 megahertz. It's going to give you a pretty good bandwidth. But if I click 80 megahertz on my router, it's only going to give me 1200 megabytes per second for use with my Quest in virtual desktop. And I want something a little bit higher than that. 1200 megabytes isn't enough for my Quest. It actually uh, lags quite a bit if I have it at the bitrate setting that I want to have it at. So what I have to do is actually have to go into auto and for this router auto pretty much means 160 megahertz which is basically 80 megahertz plus 80 megahertz and that's what allows me to get that 2400 megabytes per second uh, reading um, uh, in virtual desktop so I can have all that bitrate to be able to use AV1 or whatever codec I want at a higher bitrate and to pretty much get a better visual quality. Now, after you do that, you're gonna wanna find the best channel to use. I set mine on auto because it already sets a pretty good channel for uh, the space that I live in. But if you don't know what channel you need to use, you're gonna have to download a, an app like this, which is an, a Wi-Fi analyzer it's going to analyze the space that you live in and it's going to find uh, which channels are being currently used so if you're going to be using five gigahertz for example then you're going to want to connect to a a channel that is not currently being used so this is my router right now my main router this is these are the channels that it's using but let's say for example i was living in an apartment which had a whole bunch of channels that were already being used let's say you know 52 62 80 whatever all those channels are being used you're going to want to find the channel that is least congested from the available options so for what i see here 161 and 52 and 48 are being used so i would want to find a channel that is in between that so let's go back to that page real quick 
So in that case, I would want, now I'm in a six gigahertz band, I just looked at the five gigahertz bands, but theoretically, if I were to use the five gigahertz band, I would wanna go somewhere in between at like 97, right? So that would be in between 52 and 161. That would clear up all that space just for me. Now, since I use six gigahertz, I am the literally only person in my house that uses six gigahertz. None of my neighbors are using it, nor if the, even if they are were using it, they would just be too far away for their signal to reach me anyway. So mine is at six gigahertz. I could pretty much use any channel I want, but I'm just gonna leave it on auto because I don't have any congestion whatsoever. So there we go. Now that's pretty much all you're gonna wanna do, but if you wanna go a little bit more in depth, I did leave a link in the description below to a Reddit post where he goes like super in depth. So if you're still having issues after this video, I would click on that link and check it out and see if his tips help you personally. All right, so after going through all of these settings, you're gonna wanna finally now choose the streaming service that you're gonna use. And there are various different ones out there. The most popular ones are Airlink, from Quest, there's the Steam VR one, and also Virtual Desktop. My personal favorite one being Virtual Desktop. I think it's the one that's been the most stable for me, the one that's easiest to connect to, and it also has the most video settings, such as the AV1 codec, which is the best codec at the moment to get the best video quality out of a certain number of megabytes per second. And AV1 right now is the most efficient codec. So you can have the best video quality for the least amount of bit rate, which is what you're gonna wanna do. Now it is a pretty taxing codec to run on your Quest, so, or your PC, and you're gonna also have to make sure that your PC is capable of AV1. I know the new 40 series cards are capable and also the new AMD 7 series cards are capable as well. But if you have an older generation with only support for H.265 and H.264, I would actually avoid using H.265 because it's just too computationally expensive without the quality that AV1 provides. In my experience, it's just super laggy. It doesn't stream very well at all. I found you can either use AV1 or H.264. All right, here's the desktop looking through my Quest 3. Go ahead and put down the right controller and pick up the left one. Now, as you can see the button with the three lines, you're gonna wanna click on that, the one next to the X button. And once you click on that, that's gonna show this page right here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go into streaming and go into graphics quality, VR graphics quality. If you have an RTX 4090, 7900 XTX, or something like that, you can click Godlike. That's gonna give you the native resolution of the Quest 3, if you're using a Quest 3, with distortion accounted for. That's from the virtual desktop developers directly. So that's gonna give you the best resolution possible for your Quest 3. If you're using a Quest 2 or Quest 3S, you're gonna have a lower resolution, so um, it's gonna run better. But Quest 3, Godlike, that's even above the uh, Quest Link setting that you can have it maxed out at. The Ultra setting is gonna be equivalent to the Quest 3's uh, maximum, uh, or rather the uh, Quest Link's maximum resolution setting. But Virtual Desktop lets you go even above that. And I have a 4090, so I I can run that resolution just fine. So for VR frame rate, this is where you set the um, the hertz, basically of your headset. I have it at 90 hertz. I found 120 hertz to be pretty much um, I don't know. It was just very inconsistent, and it is also gonna reduce your your quality as well. I found 90 hertz to be just fine. But if you're having issues with that as well, you can go to 80 FPS or even 72 FPS. It's actually pretty good at 72 FPS as well. It's I, I really don't have an issue with that, but I have a 4090, I can go to 90 FPS, so I don't have an issue. Now, VR bitrate. This is 
for AV1. It's going to allow you to go up to a maximum of 200 megabytes per second. But if you're using something like H.264, you can go above that. Now, if you can, I would have it at 200 megabytes per second. It's going to give you pretty good image quality, not as good as Quest uh, Link using it directly with H.264 at 900 megabytes per second. That's going to look better than 200 megabytes per second using AV1. But for wireless streaming, this is going to be the best image quality you're going to get. All right. You cannot get better than this at the moment with uh, wireless streaming. Sharpening, that's up to you. If you're a pass through, that's up to you. Uh, also, by default, you are going to have this increased color vibrance setting turned on. I personally like to keep it off just because it, I don't know, it's a little, I, I prefer the more, more neutral colors of the Quest 3. But that's just me personally. That's totally up to you. Now, over here, you have a setting called video buffering. I would keep this on. It does add a little bit of latency, but it also reduces stutters. And I freaking hate stutters. So I do actually keep this on. And then this Snapdragon Game Resolution, Super Resolution, I would actually turn this on if you're using any setting below Godlike. What this does is upscale the image using um snapdragon using this technology and actually it does look real good so if you are using ultra or high definitely have uh, this super resolution upscaling turned on asynchronous sy space warp uh if you want you can have this turn on if not turn it off my pc is really strong so i can run any game at native 90 hertz so i would to totally disable this all right after doing that go into the settings and then um uh, uh go to fray rate uh, okay so up here use optimal resolution i would turn this on it's going to basically change your monitor resolution to match the streaming resolution and they recommend that just because you don't it's less taxing on your computer and you're not going to be able to you're not going to look at it anyway so just keep that on environmental quality you can have a medium high low it's up to you it's basically the what you're looking at all around you since you're not going to be looking at it, I would just keep it on low. Frame rate, that's, you can also choose the frame rate of the desktop bit rate. Best de desktop bit rate is the uh, desktop that you're looking at right now, currently. And uh, that one doesn't really matter. You can have it at 15 or more. So whatever, it's just the desktop. It's not a big deal. All right, here on the right side, I would uh, boost the clock rates right here. That's a setting that will allow you to basically overclock the quest just a little bit. And this is mostly made for use when you're recording, but I like to have it on all the time just because I have a, a battery pack that is always connected to my quest. So I do get pretty good battery life, even if this is turned on. So for me, I don't have an issue with this setting. All right. And then after that, you can just, if you want to, Go to uh, your games, start your games and stuff like that. Go to environments. You know, it's, I mean, it's totally up to you. See how cool that is. But that's totally up to you. Uh, from here on out, though, I'm, we're pretty much done. You can start playing the game and uh, just check out what that looks like for you. All right, y'all. Thank you for watching the video. I hope I was helpful today. If you did find the video useful, please leave a like in this video to push it up in the algorithm. Also, comment down below and subscribe as well. Thank you all for watching and have a blessed day. Peace.